Last time, even though we were talking about the core, I also brought up the importance of balance, not just for the core, for the front part, in other words, the abdominals compared to the lower back, but the importance of balance between, let's say, your pectoralis and your latissimus dorsi, having one part of your body not be stronger than the other part. They need to be balanced. Or your bicep compared to your tricep, or in the leg muscles, the front part of your leg, your quadriceps, and your hamstrings so that you don't pull your hamstrings like sprinters and football players do all the time because their hamstrings are too weak. Because without balance, we have injury when we don't want torn muscles or strained muscles. Last time we went over the crunch, the curl up, and the sit up. And the difference when someone holds your feet and it makes your hip flexors work more than your abdominals, or when you hook your feet, which again, activates your hip flexors more than your abdominals, and your abdominals just become the secondary muscle. Now that I've got you caught up from the last time, let's talk about leg lift, which is essentially like someone hooking your feet. So if someone holds your feet down, or you hook your feet and you try to come up, what ends up happening is you work your hip flexors a little bit more than your abdominals. Well, the same thing happens when you when gravity is pulling your legs down and you have to activate your hip flexors to bring your legs up. So what actually ends up happening anytime you're doing a leg lift, just like if you're hooking your feet, is that your hip flexors work a little bit more than your abdominals. Not saying your abdominals aren't working, but hip flexors are the first thing to work and the secondary muscles are the abdominals. These muscles colored in red here are the various muscles of the hip flexors. And when you do the leg lifts or when you do sit-ups while someone's holding your feet, your hip flexors activate, which pull your body into a curl. Well, these are also the muscles that lift your leg when you're running. So as these muscles tighten up, your leg lifts up. I just want you to be aware of that as well. Here's another look at your hip flexors being activated while hooking your feet and your abdominals working as well. Here's a good look at another way to do a leg lift. Notice the red muscles here and notice as those muscles tighten up, your legs come up. And you can see how these abdominals are not really involved. They would be involved if you curled your butt up then your abdominals would be involved because essentially you'd be doing a curl along with a leg lift. Here are some other ways people do leg lifts. Each one of these ways that you've seen that people do leg lifts activates people's hip flexors every time they lift their legs against gravity. So anytime you do a leg lifting type of movement, if you want your um, abdominals involved as much as your hip flexors are, you've got to make sure to do a curling movement at the top end of once you get your legs up, make sure you curl your hips in, okay? That way your abdominals are working as well on your leg lifting movements. A lot of people don't realize this. Now let's talk about how to get the obliques involved with your abdominal movements. Anytime we twist, we get our obliques involved. For example, she's twisting in this direction, which means this side of the obliques are involved. Let me show you another image. In this image, you can see the twist happening. He's twisting his body this way and this way. And you can see right here, the external oblique right there that's the muscle that's working. So if he's twisting this way, this side is working. If he was twisting the other way, then the other side would be working. Here's a good look at everything I've explained all together. First of all, we're hooking the feet. And because we're hooking the feet, our hip flexors are the first thing to move us. But as we come up, the abdominals get involved. But once we twist, and you can see here and the darker red, and we're twisting toward this side right over here, now the obliques are getting involved. So to start, the hip flexors, because our feet are hooked, our abdominals follow up, but then when we twist, 
you see this side oblique because we're twisting to this side working as well. So here's a quick review. Anytime you do a curl up, crunch, or sit up, you're only working your abdominals unless someone is holding your feet. That's when your hip flexors get involved. And if you take this movement and twist it to the side, then you get your obliques involved toward the side that you're twisting. So if you twist over here, this side oblique's working. If you're twisting back over here, then the other side oblique is working. It's the same concept when you modify a leg lift. She's going from a crunch to kind of a modified leg lift with a bicycle movement with her legs. The fact that she's lifting her legs up gets the hip flexors involved. The fact that she's twisting her leg lift gets the obliques involved. And the fact that she came up from her crunch movement to start gets her abdominals involved. Other ways you can tighten up your core is with planks. People do these all the time. And there's variations from planks where people are popping up into the push-up position, popping back down, lifting weights with one side while stabilizing on the other side. There's a bunch of different ways to do planks. But as you're working, you are tightening up your core. All these muscles are just tightening up. This is a side plank. The difference between a side plank and a regular plank is now we're actually isolating and focusing on the external obliques, okay? So when you pop your hips back up and then stretch them down and then pop them back up, you're isolating your obliques. Now back to the last part of the core, the lower back. Whatever you do to the abdominals, to the obliques, to the hip flexors, as far as the amount of sets and repetitions, you need to do to the lower back as well, so you don't have a weak lower back. So when we did a curl up, a sit up, a leg lift, um, we were basically flexing, okay, doing a curl, curling motion. Well, opposite of that motion is an extension motion, okay, and this is actually a low back extension. So all the movements I'm about to show you take you from bent to straight. That's why we call it an extension. So this is a lower back extension. Take a look at the lower back that's working here. And honestly, this muscle goes throughout from your spine all the way down to your lower back. Even though we call it as working the lower back, um, it is working the whole back as we come up. And you'll also notice that there are some secondary muscles in the gluteus maximus and the hamstring that get involved as well too when working the back part of your core. Here's a look at various low back extension movements. And some of these movements have very descriptive names. Like these are called skydivers. These are called swimmers. Can you guess? These are called Superman. Obviously called a trunk lift. There's a lot of variety in how you can do these. And you can see they can be done with or without weight room equipment. And as I always say, last but not least, stretching. You can see here that these are our abdominals and then you can see with the picture behind it that we're stretching our abdominal walls. So when you're doing this stretch, you're working this or stretching this muscle. And when you stretch to the side, you're stretching your obliques. So right here is a good look at our hip flexors and the stretch that would work it. So right down here, you're stretching your hip flexors and right up here, you're also stretching your hip flexors. And here's a good look at the lower back and a good stretch for the lower back. So that's it for exercising the muscles of the core and stretching the muscles of the core. Turn your cameras on and as soon as everybody's cameras on, I will release you.